Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Tadic. I am a Professor of Law and Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Dear students, today we are going to talk something which is not very legal in nature, but that is very, very important for any business student and executive. See, when I say law, rules, regulations, courts, enforcement agencies like the CBI, ED, regulatory bodies like the SEBI, RBI and there are many and many. So, as a business leader, you know, as a business person, when you are taking some decisions, you know, you face a situation in your company or in your team. So, uh, you have to identify, you have to take a call that what should I do? Should I do A or should I do B? Sometime, you have ethical dilemmas in your business. When I say ethical dilemma means that if you do right thing, maybe you lose some business, you know. If you do right thing, maybe some people will be annoyed with you in your organization. So, it is an ethical dilemma which we face not only in our professional life, but in our personal life also that what to do, how to do and why this is important and how it is connected with law. First, I will reply to that question why how it is connected with law. So, most of the illegal activities starts with ethical dilemma. You know, whenever you face a situation, then you, you want to take a decision which is good for you, good for your organization. But then there is an ethical dilemma that if you take a right decision, ethical decision, maybe not good for the business. Okay? So, you think, okay, let us take the illegal decision. But maybe in the shorter term, uh, that is good, but if you see the longer term or the impact of that behavior, then that is not the good thing for any company. Like for example, suppose uh, we will talk about so many laws, rules and regulations. I just take some uh, examples from very simple laws, you know. So like for example, if I talk about the intellectual property. So if you know that some of your employees, your team members, seniors and juniors are stealing someone's intellectual property like you know if they are uh, infringing someone's patent, trademark or copyright. If you come across to that situation then what will you do? Either you can say okay it is not my concern let them do whatever they want to do or you raise that voice before your management and say this is illegal. Second situation suppose if you come across that someone is harassing a woman at the workforce and you know that if you raise your voice, maybe you can lose your job or maybe your boss can be very offended with you. But at the same time, you know that if uh, you do not stop this, if you do not raise your voice, ultimately the things will be out, of, uh, out in the market and not only the reputation of the company will go, but your ethical and moral and professional standards will also be compromised. So, in this lecture, we will talk about ethical dilemmas in business and what to do and how to do. So, first understand what is business ethics? The standard of conduct and rules based on moral principles governing how business and employees should conduct themselves. So, when I say moral principles, ethical principles, are they same from one country to another country? Not necessary. You know, when I say what is right in India, maybe not right in USA, or what is right in USA, maybe not right in India. So, you will always find uh, differences in the social values, ethical values, moral values in different societies, especially when you are working in an international organization. However, we have like you know after so many discussion in last 30, 40 years talking about the ethics and professional standards in businesses, we have come up with some common ideas which are very, very common and acceptable in all countries, you know. Like for example, if I talk about that how to behave 
with a woman you know uh, suppose he is working in your team how to behave with a woman are you supposed to sexually harass her so i don't think that in any culture at least not in indian culture or in western culture that behavior is acceptable okay so the, when i say business ethics then the standards of conduct it defines your conduct it defines the rules of your organization based on moral principles and it tells you that how you should run your business and how employees should run their conduct in during the office hours then we have social responsibility also like you cannot say that uh, i am not responsible for society at all like as a individual as a company you are socially responsible like for example if you come to know that your company or your factory is uh, doing environmental pollution okay so as a company as an individual you have to understand that this behavior may create some social issues for the people who are living in the nearby area health issues can be arisen so you have to take social responsibility in your business then you have to create balance between what is right and what is profitable these are very tough task tough call you know because sometime few things are profitable but not right okay so you need to go with the right direction and if you have uh, ethical value in your uh, organization then you always go for what is right maybe in short term you are uh, ready to face a uh, few losses or less profits but in long term you want to create an organization which is based on ethics and moral values and often no clear cut choices sometime you know they are so messy the things are moving so fast and it's difficult to understand what is right what is wrong because you know uh, right things are also having lot of multi dimensional aspect you know like for example if i talk about the woman then you really don't know whether that person is harassing that woman or they are having an affair you know so it's difficult to understand what is going on so you have to be very clear in your understanding your discussions and your decision making process and it is often shaped by the organization ethical climate so in your organization if you believe that no one from the top to bottom or especially at the top level if you see that no one is following ethical values or standards that it's very difficult to uh, expect that ethical value at the mid level and junior level okay or maybe the society you are operating in a society where people really don't care about ethical values then it's very difficult for a company to adopt ethical values okay so it uh, it's a it's mainly shaped by the ethical environment of the organization society and country however that cannot be an excuse you know if suppose you are operating in a society you are working in a area where lot of people are doing uh, environmental pollution it doesn't mean that you should also do it okay uh, ethics and moral values are very very individual and personal you have to decide what is right for you you cannot uh, make an excuse that other people are also doing it that's why i am doing it that cannot be a valid excuse so if you see this thing the moral judgments at the top level then moral rules and ethics system and code of ethics so first you have to create a moral judgment you know th that's the top level but it starts from code of ethics so first you create a code of ethics you write down all the things which a employee or the anyone in the company should not do it then you create an ethical system in your company because if you just write down something some rules like 5 pages 10 pages and if you don't implement those rules if you are not your management your compliance team and your hr if they are not serious about those code of ethics if they don't create the ethical system in that company then nothing will happen then uh, above the ethical system you need to create moral rules also okay so uh, everybody should have some moral ground and having the same understanding about the ethics and moral and then finally people have to take moral judgments you know what is right what is wrong ultimately that judgment is very very personal nobody can tell everything to a person that that is right that is wrong you have to take judgment based on your own moral principles so unethical business practices like you can say as a individual can make unethical choices like conflict of interest bribery gift giving and receiving 
invasion of privacy or confidentiality, dishonest hiring practices, insurance fraud, credit card fraud, internet abuse. So, so first talk about the conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is a situation in which a business decision may be influenced for personal gain. Like for example, conflict of situation, uh, for example, if you know that the company wants to buy something and you will, you are the guy who will take the final decision. Okay? The company wants to buy suppose 10 laptop and they ask you, okay, now you are the person, please go in the market, find the best uh, price and buy 10 laptop. So now you go to your brother's uh, shop, he is also selling laptop and you tell him, okay, I need to buy 10 laptop and I should buy from you because you are my brother. Okay, that's a conflict of interest type of situation. Okay, because now you are taking care of the interest of your family, of your brother and not yourself. Okay, and not to the company. So this type of conflict of interest can happen. Then bribery is very simple. You are paying money to the government officers to do something or not to do something. Gift giving and receiving, that's not completely unethical in some civil in some cultures. But if you are receiving any gifts or you are uh, giving any gift, you must inform your management, you must take their approval so that they can understand that this is just a cultural part. Like in India, if you are giving someone a Deepavali gift or you are also receiving Deepavali gift, maybe not problematic in Indian culture, but in some uh, other cultures like in USA, uh, they take it very seriously that you know, why are you taking the gift, you know. But if you inform your organization, if you take approval from your organization, then that will be not unethical. Invasion of privacy or confidentiality, unnecessary you are entering into someone's computer, mobile, conversation, you know, that's unethical practice. Dishonest hiring practice, you know, like you are suppose HR manager or you are giving a reference to your company and you know that that person is not suitable for this job or you are hiring someone which you believe uh, that is not suitable for job but you are just hiring him for some other purposes maybe you have taken some bribe or maybe you are hiring your friends or your family so that can be unethical. Insurance fraud, credit frauds like you are using uh, company's insurance or credit facilities for your own purpose or you are making frauds also with the company and internet abuse like you know you are uh, doing something which is not acceptable as per the company's policy and uh, so, so internet abuse is also one type of the unethical practice. So on the job ethical dilemma you see the common business ethical challenges. The first is situation in which a business decision may be influenced by personal gain that is a conflict of interest. Okay. Second, honesty and integrity, telling the truth and adhering to the deeply felt ethical principle in business decisions like honesty and integrity, that is very important like nobody can explain you, nobody can tell you what is honesty, what is integrity. These are very much uh, you know uh, integrated in our value system. If you want to be honest, you nobody can explain you, nobody can train you to be honest. Employees disclosure of illegal, immoral or unethical practice in the organization, whistle blowing. That is very important concept. I believe you know the whistle blowing. It is a concept where in a company, suppose you are working and you feel that they are doing something illegal activities, you know. So, and you know that the management, the top level guys, they are not very serious about it or maybe your immediate boss is not listening you. So what can you do? First, you can raise your voice as a whistle blower in within your company. You can write an email to the concerned people like the chief compliance officer, chief legal officer, CFOs that you know this is something wrong happening in our company. So that is a whistle blowing. And uh, second, if you believe that no, even the top guys are also involved in that process and you can't, if even if you write an email, nothing will happen then you can write to the government and regulatory bodies like for example if you come across that your company is involved in serious corruption activities the top guys are involved in corruption activities then you can write to cbi you can write to enforcement directorate that there are some people who are doing the corruption and cbi and enforcement directorate and other agencies will keep your name confidential but that is whistle blowing, you know, and, and that's a very good thing for the society where people are doing whistle blowing. Loyalty versus truth. 
business people expect employees to be loyal and truthful but ethical conflicts may arise sometime in your organization you have to choose between loyalty versus truth you have to choose whether you are loyal to your boss or your company or you are loyal to your own ethical and professional standards because bosses will come and go you know you will uh, move out of that company sometime but your ethical and your professional standards will remain with you forever and in long term you will create an image also that you know people will start recognizing you you know he is a very ethical guy he is a right guy you know we cannot ask him to do something illegal unethical because he is very clear about that he will not do it or vice versa he is a corrupt guy he will do whatever we ask him to do so this is how you can create your image also so we should be loyal to our bosses till the time there is no uh, you know issue of ethical uh, dilemma so how organizations shape ethical conduct code of ethics and conduct a formal set of guidelines for maintaining ethics in the workplace so like the companies can create a formal set of ethical guidelines that what is uh, what is allowed and what is not allowed code of ethics cannot detail a solution of each ethical solution so corporation provide training in ethical reasoning along with a code of ethics so now that's a very important part like the this code like the document 5 pages 10 pages cannot tell you about everything that what you are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do and even they will not provide solution you know they will just tell you what is not supposed to do but whether you will do it or not it's up to you okay and there are so many complex situations also where even the this code will not cover so in that scenario the company should provide continuous training to their employees in terms of ethical reasoning so that people can do reasoning whether it's unethical or ethical okay an ethical environment how to create ethical environment so first is ethical leadership executive must demonstrate ethical behavior in their actions that's very important until and unless executives are not showing ethical leadership if your bosses are cheating if they are involved in unethical and illegal activities how they can expect from you that you will be ethical the same thing applies to your seniors and juniors okay so one ethical leadership must be there ethical actions helping employees recognizing and reasoning through ethical problems and turning them into ethical action so ethical action should also be there if someone is taking ethical action they should appreciate that thing the structure of ethical environment you can see ethical awareness ethical education ethical action and ethical leadership so this is very interesting uh, thing here the leadership is very important here so maybe right now you will join as a junior person in the company but once you move to the next level you need to understand that ethical leadership is very much appreciated in most of the multinational companies now the indian companies are also appreciating ethical leadership because in short term maybe you take a decision which is not good financial for the company but later on in the long term people do appreciate your ethical leadership okay then social responsibility social responsibility is the duty to do what is best for the good of the society you when see earlier we used to think that as an a business leader or a, a business executive i am responsible only for my company and for the shareholders but now we have a, we have an approach of stakeholders so stakeholders like the environment employees suppliers distributors uh, consumers so we have to think for everyone in the society what is good for the society management's consideration of profit consumer satisfaction and social well being of equal value in evaluating the firm's performance so you have to have a balanced approach harmonizing approach that how to check that what is good for the society and good for everyone see when you say that if you take an ethical decision and in the short term if management loses some money but in long term that is good for the company's profit and reputation contribution to the overall economy job opportunities and charitable contributions and services responsibilities to the general public are we responsible to the general public yes as a business executive as a business leader yes we are responsible for the public at large like for example public health issues 
what to do about inherently dangerous products such as alcohol, tobacco, vaccines and steroids and many more. So, when you are working in this particular sector, you have to think about the public health issues. Protecting the environment, using resources efficiently, minimizing pollution. So, you are also responsible that your behavior should not create more pollution in the society and in the environment. So, you are responsible for environment. Recycling. Reprocessing used material for use. So, within the company when you are using so many resources like the light for example. So, can we turn off the light during the uh, night time when no, no one is working. So, you have to think like can we use the paper uh, for the both side. Can we avoid the printing of you know documents. So, these type of small decisions are uh, basically connected with your ethics and values. Okay. These are very small but they are very much connected with the ethics and the moral of an individual and company. Developing the quality of the workforce, enhancing quality of the work uh, overall workforce through education and diversity initiatives okay, and corporate philanthropy, case contribution, donations of equipment and products and supporting the volunteer efforts of companies employees. So, you also need to create a culture you know suppose you are working in a company you should create a culture in the company where uh, a corporate philanthropy is happening like you are going to nearby villages, you are donating something, you are helping the society. So, when you do good things then you feel good and you are more encouraged to take ethical decisions. Responsibilities to customers are see without any doubt any company cannot survive and grow without taking care of the customer centric approach. So, in your ethical decision sometimes you have an ethical dilemma if, if you believe that customer is right and your company is wrong instead of protecting your company you should you must say that yeah you are right we, we are wrong and you should take the responsibility on behalf of the company. So, right to be the safe the first right of the uh, consumer is safe operation of products avoiding product liability the right to be informed like you must inform customers the right information. You must avoid false or misleading advertisement and providing effective customer service. So, suppose if you know that our advertise suppose if the advertising team comes to you and say ok let us uh, we have made a very uh, impressive advertisement for our company, but if you believe that this is misleading you know whatever they are trying to say to the customer that is not the right picture you know obviously in advertisement you like to glorify everything, but glorifying and misleading they are two different things. So, if uh, your company is trying to mislead the consumers you should take an ethical decision right to choose ability to customer to, to choose the product and service they want. You should not create a situation where uh, customers have no option to choose you know like you, you are limiting the market, you are uh, creating the anti-competitive environment in the market. So, that should not be there. The right to be heard, the very important right, ability to con uh, consumers to express legitimate complaints to the appropriate parties. So, in a company there has to be some mechanism where uh, consumers can complain and if they are complaining there has to be a mechanism also where people are listening them, understanding them and finally, try to solve them. Okay. So, until and unless we are not taking care of the uh, consumer on the basis of ethical principle. Again I say that you, um, you might think that yeah every company should do it, but why they are not doing it. Like very few companies are very much customer centric. Uh, once they sell their product they really do not care about their customers, but there are few companies who are very very clear about that we are very much customer centric and because that commitment is coming from the ethical background. They feel that this is ethical, this is moral, this is professional. Forget about law right now. Uh, we are doing it because we believe in ethic, ethics, you know, we believe in morality, we believe in our, our professional standards. So, whenever they face any ethical dilemma, they always choose the right direction. Okay? So, after the customers, we are also responsible to employees as an ethical organization as an ethical employee we are responsible for the employees also like for example, workplace safety monitors by occupational safety and health administration. So, we need to understand that if employees do not feel safe and 
they don't feel the healthy environment within the organization, th then that is also unethical. Quality of life issues, this is a very interesting which is emerging nowadays. It talks about balancing work and family through flexible work schedules, subsidized child care and regulations such as family and medical leave. So, in a company where they are not giving all this quality of life issues and that is also unethical. Like for example, if you are uh, running a company or you are working in a company where the top management is not very concerned about the medical leave or family leave or the work life balance, then that is also unethical uh, considering the modern approach of employees. Ensuring equal opportunities for on the job, that is very important, providing equal opportunities to all employees without discrimination, that is very important. Many aspects regulated by law, we will talk more about this discrimination, that in a company if they are discriminating against people like for example, they do not want to hire women or like in northern India, maybe they do not want to hire south Indian, south Indian they do not want to hire north Indian. You know, people are discriminating against uh, based on the sex, on the gender, uh, on the language, on, on color, you know, political beliefs, so many elements, you know. So, that should not be there. There should be equal opportunity for everyone. And uh, sexual harassment and sexism, that is very important. Avoiding unwelcome action of a sexual nature, equal pay for equal work without regard of gender. We will talk more about this thing also. So, first talk about the discrimination. One of the biggest ethical issues affecting the business world is discrimination. In the past few months, many corporations have come under fire for lacking a diverse workforce which is often down to uh, discrimination. However, discrimination can occur at business at all size, it ap applies to any action that cause an employee to receive unequal treatment. So, discrimination is all is everywhere, it is not only in India, you will find discrimination everywhere. So, in India maybe we have discrimination against the people on the basis of their sex or gender or their religion or their reason, you know you are from south, so I do not want to hire you, you are from north east, we do not want to hire you. So, we have lot of prejudices against people, you know and most of those prejudices are absolutely wrong. Okay, so, that should not happen in outside of the India, they have prejudices like the racism like in US in some developed country, they some people not all, some people have prejudices against uh, black people or Indian people, you know. So, that is also and some people have prejudices uh, against people in India and abroad about their sexual choices whether they are gay or lesbian that can be a huge discrimination for the people. Okay. So, discrimination is not just unethical, in many cases it is also illegal. Okay. So, if you are discriminating based on these factors, uh, this invite also legal action. There are statues in India to protect employees from discrimination based on age, gender, race, religion, disability and any more. Like suppose you want to, you do not want to hire a disabled person, you believe no, no, he will work less. So, that is your uh, misunderstanding about the disability, okay. maybe that person can do far better job than the other people. Okay. So, if you do something based on these things, it is not only unethical, but it is illegal also. Nonetheless, the gender and race pays gap shows that discrimination is still rampant. If you can see very easily, the women are getting less salary compared to men doing the same job. Okay. So, this is a very clear cut case where uh, still the pay gaps, you know, pay gaps between man and woman is a very clear cut example that discrimination is there. Other common instances of discrimination including includes fire, firing employees when they reach a certain age or giving fewer promotions to people of ethnic minorities. So, not only uh, like hiring, but sometimes uh, when you are hiring people. You know, like you suppose you have to hire 10 people. So, most of the time you like to avoid those people against whom you have your discriminatory prejudices. Okay. Or sometimes you hire them, but you do not want to give them promotions. Okay. Or if you have discrimination or prejudices against age, you know that I do not want old people in my team. So, then you do not want to give them any opportunity, you want to fire them first. So, these type of discrimination are uh, very, very unethical. Harassment, sexual harassment is very, very serious, unethical as well as illegal issue. 
the second major ethical issue business face is the harassment which is often related to racism or sexism both okay this can come in the form of verbal abuse sexual abuse teasing uh, uh, racial slurs or bullying harassment can come from anyone in the company as well as from the customers okay so sometime even your customers can do some harassment type of things based on a race or sex so if you come across to any customer who is abusing someone based on race like okay hey you are from uh, north india like you know saying something bad from south india you are saying something bad northeast people you know a lot of people you see in the society they say very bad things about them you know we we say bad things about each other you know no one is absolutely perfect but the idea is that if you come across that if one of your customer is doing that you have to act you know because that's an ethical dilemma you, you ethical dilemma is that if you say that we should blacklist this customer it means that you are losing some business okay you are maybe annoying a class of customers but then you are taking an ethical stand and say no we cannot allow any customer uh, to abuse or harass our employees based on racism and sexism and vice versa vice versa means that our employees should not uh, do the same thing against the consumer so both parties should respect each other okay harassment can come from anyone in the company and as well as from the customers in particular it is an ethical issue for the business if a supervisor is aware of the harassment from a client and takes no action to prevent it in addition to causing a toxic workplace harassment can cause employees to leave the company okay a second reason why some business lack diversity harassment can have a long term impact on the employees psychological in terms of earning and even impacting a person's entire career path so you need to understand when you are involved or uh, see uh, the here the uh, ethical dilemma can create two situations one either you are involved in that situation that you are doing something wrong or someone is doing something wrong but you are not taking any action or you are not doing something at least you can do reporting you know you can report to the top management or the concerned people that in my knowledge someone is doing it okay because if you don't do it that the person he or she may leave the company okay and not only uh, it can create negative impact on uh, his or her psychological development as, as well as on his, in career plan also abuse of leadership authority that's a very very serious thing in uh, most of the corporate sector and in the government sector also abuse of power often manifest as harassment or discrimination however those in a leadership role can also use their authority to pressure employees to skip over some aspects of proper procedure to save time potentially putting their employees at risk punish workers who are unable to meet unreasonable goals or ask for inappropriate favors so when the leaders are uh, abusing their power uh, where they are abusing their authority for their own benefit so this can be also obviously it's illegal but it is an unethical decision also in addition abuse of uh, authority can extend beyond the workforce so managers can use their position to change reports give themselves credits for the work of a subordinate misuse expenses and accept gift from suppliers or clients so these type of behavior can also create lot of uh, unethical and immoral culture in the organization nepotism and favoritism that you will find most of the developing countries yeah in developed countries also it happens but in most of the time you see that in developing countries people are suffering because of nepotism and favoritism nepotism is a when a company hires someone for being a family member okay if someone is hiring a family member instead of ignoring you know instead of hiring the right talent they are hiring someone based on the family connection <coughs> favoritism occurs when a manager treats an employee better than other workers for personal reasons so this is again unethical and immoral behavior not only are the nepotism and uh, favoritism unfair they are also disheartening to employees so the good talented people they feel very bad when someone is hiring someone on the basis of the family connection rather than the talent or the hard working employees are not getting due respect due credit because of the favoritism 
workers often find they have to work much harder to receive a promotion or other rewards so in in that type of culture people have to put extra efforts to get rewards and promotion and most of the time they don't get it if the favoritism exist in any company so you can clearly say that this unethical behavior is not only affecting the consumers but even it's affecting the employees also so whenever you see that if someone is doing it you should report to your uh, managers and the senior authorities privacy this has become very interesting and important in last 10 years because the last 10 10 15 years once we started using more and more technology Employees have recently found that distinction between work life and personal life has become less clear because all the time either you are working, work from home. So when, when I say work from home, it means that work and home, they are more or less same now. This is mainly due to the advance in the technology. For one thing, employer may punish for post on social media, particularly if they complain about work conditions or the company as a whole. Employees may even fire workers who post controversial statements that go against the company's value. So now because of work and the personal life, like if what I am saying in the social media or in the society, that is also scrutiny of the uh, company's privacy policy. Another ethical issue surrounds that the use of devices belonging to the company. Employers can now monitor all workers' activities on laptop and cell phones. Whereas it is, this is supposed to check that employees are sticking to work related activities during the businesses day. Some employers take it further, tracking keystrokes and reading emails. The question is whether to do the line between monitoring and spying. This is very very serious issue nowadays. If you are using a uh, company's computer or network or internet, then the company's top executive or anyone who is authorized to do it uh, can have complete access on your computer and your mobile so they can read your emails they can hear your voice calls and as i said that the, uh, the difference between personal and professional life is uh, disappearing now so in your personal and your official laptop you might have some personal data so they can access your personal data also so in, nowadays uh, we will talk about the data privacy law in this uh, in our course so now that data privacy law protects this type of situation however as a company uh, they should adopt ethical value system where they can clearly make a rules and regulation that who can access what and what would be the line between spying and monitoring monitoring is important no doubt but the monitoring should not convert into spying so how to avoid ethical issues in business a common method business used to manage ethical issues is to simplify deny the problem exists. The simple issue is that the problem does not exist. Companies often combine this with a gag order to stop employees talking. So they say problem does not exist and do not talk about it. That is simple. Too simple rule. It does not exist. Do not talk about it. If you want to maintain a good reputation, this is the worst thing you can do like as a company as an individual. After all, sooner or later, the unethical behavior will come to light. If you believe as a company or as an individual that if I say problem does not exist, nobody will talk about problem and then problem will disappear. No, problem will appear, it will go to the social media, it will go to the courtroom, police station and ultimately individual as well as the company will suffer, the reputation will go down. So hiding or covering up exercise or strategy cannot work anymore. A better strategy is to take an active role, seeking out and correcting unethical behavior as early as possible. There are few key, key tactics that every business owner, owners need to implement. So what they can do? They can create policies, create company policies. Make sure that employees read company's policies when they start working in your business. Includes both a privacy policy and social media policy that what they are supposed to post, what they are not supposed to post. The first should tell workers what computer activities and other information you will be able to access. So like if you put all these things in your company policy, people can read and understand. Monitor only pertinent information on laptop and other devices. Like you have to understand that you cannot go, uh, you cannot cross a boundary and start reading the personal emails, personal documents and all these things. So you need to understand 
that there is a difference between professional and professional life. Provide ongoing training. So, this should cover aspects like harassment prevention, it worthwhile seeking outside support for this form a reputable agency or a professional as low quality training can even make the problem worse. So, like you know whatever you want to create in your organization good ethical culture, you should keep, you should give them top class training you know so that they can understand they can learn and if the training keeps going for a regular time for a long time regular time then it becomes the culture of the organization. Then you also need to sign the employees to non-disclosure agreement. Employees should sign a non-disclosure agreement before they start working with any sensitive information so that they cannot disclose that information in the market. Create a meritocracy instead of uh, nepotism or favoritism, create a culture where people are getting award based on their performance rather than their relationship or the family relationship with the uh, senior leadership. Take an active role in daily activities, become, a in, become as involved as you are able in the day to day activities as at your company. The ethics is not like taught at, at the school level or college level or in the training program only. As a leader, as an employee, you need to integrate ethical principles into your day to day activities. Double check your books on a regular basis, that is very important by checking your books like audit books you will notice if someone is stealing from your company. In the case if you do not detect theft you will need to decide whether firing the employee is enough or not. So see lot of time as I said that a lot of employees are stealing money or if they are doing you know favoritism to their people. So, if you keep checking your documents then you will understand that who is doing what and if someone is stealing money, if someone is doing corruption in your company, you should fire them or if you want you can file a criminal case against those people. So, important ethical question which you need to ask, these are the questions basically you need to find answer for yourself. The first, is it against the law? Does it violate company or professional policies? So, the first question you should is it against the law? If you do not know go and talk to your legal team, compliance team they will tell you. Does it violate company uh, or professional policies? So, you need to understand the company's policies again. If you do not get go and talk to your compliance manager, he will tell you whether that behavior is acceptable as per the company's policy or not. What if everyone did this? How would I feel if someone did this to me? You cannot say that okay, everybody is doing to it. everybody is doing the same unethical activity. So why should I worry? Just imagine if someone uh, does the same activity to you, how would you feel? So if you have that empathetic uh, leadership quality, then you will not follow the wrong guys. Am I sacrificing long-term benefit for short-term gain? That's very important question. You should ask. Here are the some steps if you find yourself in ethical dilemma, what, what like how to make a decision, ethical decision. Identify the ethical dilemma, what is the ethical dilemma, like what I am going to, what options I have. Discover alternative action, so you say okay if I take action A, action B, action C, these are the three options for me, this is ethical, this is less ethical, this is unethical or illegal. Decide who might be affected. You, want, you need to understand that whatever you do, someone will be affected. If you take a right decision, maybe the wrong guy in the company, he will be affected. If you take a wrong decision, uh, the right guy will be affected, the society or some person, employee, customer. So, someone has, someone will be affected uh, with your decision. List the probable effects on the alternatives and select the best alternative and the best alternative here is ethical decision. Okay, so now we will discuss some real cases which happened in India and you can easily see that how it happened. So ethical violation in corporates. So first very important case is Satyam scam case. The Satyam computer service as you know the scandal was India largest corporate fraud. The founder and director of India based outsourcing company Satyam computer services falsified the accounts, inflated the share price and stole large sum from the company. Much of this was invested in property, so like the scandal was brought to light in 2009 when chairman uh, Raju confessed that the company's accounts had been uh, falsified. On April 2019 via a public accounts process auction process at 46 percent stake in stake 
Satyam was purchased by Mahindra and Mahindra owned company Tech Mahindra as part of its diversification strategy. Effective July 2009, Satyam rebranded its service under the new uh, Mahindra management as Mahindra Satyam. After a delay due to tax issues, Tax Mahindra announced its merger with Mahindra uh, Satyam on uh, 2012 after the broad. So, in this case, this is the example where a very big and successful company decided to go for unethical and illegal ways like you know they uh, falsified their accounts, they inflated the uh, profits and they inflated the share price and they also stole lot of money from the company and Raju finally went to jail also. The 2G spectrum case as we heard about the 2G spectrum case is an ongoing alleged scam case in which politicians and private officials of the uh, previous government were accused. And the main argument was that the A Raja who was a telecom minister in 2007 is being accused of selling 2G spectrum license at a very low cost which resulted in loss of 176 crore rupees. Okay. So, this was the another case. Then Maggi noodles crisis in India. I think this is very interesting where the, a very big multinational company got some ethical and illegal behavior in India. In May 2015, the FDA, uh, federal, drug, uh, federal Drug Agency in USA, representative from uh, uh, Barabanki, a district of Uttar Pradesh, India, stated that samples of the product Maggi, two minutes noodle, had unusually excessive level of MSG. It is a very uh, dangerous stuff for the food. This finding led to the multiple market withdrawals and investigations in India and beyond. Testing controversies. MSG testing found some MSG in Maggi noodles. The package stated no added MSG. However, MSG naturally occurs in uh, onion powder and wheat flours. Maggi offered to remove the word no added MSG from the package to overcome the objection. Then Maggi noodles included favoring packets named test uh, maker which intended to dissolve in water during cooking. Maggi insisted that testing should be done on the product as it is eaten. However, the FASI, the regulator in India which talks about the food industry insisted that the powder itself should be tested. Okay. On June 5th, the FASI said that the prescribed standards of 2.5 parts per million would have to apply to all components of the product. Out of three samples tested by the Delhi authorities, 10 of them had lead content exceeding this limit. The packet that initiated the investigation from uh, Uttar Pradesh had 17.2 ppm of lead. So, in this case, it was it is a very clear like you, you know I am just going through the simple things that it is very clear that is uh, such a big and famous brand can also face ethical issues because of their ignorance because of not understanding that something is going wrong in the company. Uh, anyway, that is fine uh, for the Maggi. Then the next case we can talk about the Punjab national fraud case. Okay. Here in this case Punjab national bank PNB fraud case related to fraudulent letter of undertaking worth 11,356 crore issued by the PNB at its uh, Brady house branch in Fort Mumbai making PNB liable for the amount. The fraud was allegedly organized by jeweler and designer Nero Modi. You, you heard about Nero Modi nowadays. And Nero and his wife uh, Amy Modi, brother Nishal Modi and uncle Mahul Choksi, all partners of the firm uh, Diamond and uh, Solar Export and Stellar Diamonds along with PNB officials and employees and directors of Nero Modi and Mahul Choksi's firm have all been named in the charge sheet by the CBI. Nero Modi and his family absconded in early 2008 before the news of the scam broke in India. So, now the enforcement directorate is uh, doing investigation in this case. So, you can see few big guys they made a big scam but at the same time you cannot say that the junior guys in the PNB or in the Nero Modi firm they were not aware of this fraud going on. But nobody took a decision, nobody took a ethical call that we should inform the government agencies that these big guys at the top level they are trying to do something absolutely illegal. 
and now Modi is on the Interpol wanted list for criminal conspiracy and criminal breach of trust, cheating and dishonesty, including delivery of property, corruption, money laundering since 2018. And now he is in the central London. He is living in London. Okay. And lot of people from the bank, the senior officers, they, they were arrested in India and now they are facing criminal cases. They, the bank initially said that two of its employees at the branch were involved in the escape scam as the bank core banking system was bypassed when the corrupt employees issued LOU to overseas branches of other Indian banks including Allahabad Bank, Axis Bank, Union Bank and using the international financial communication system SWIFT. Okay. So, this is very clear that uh, few employees can create a huge problem. Okay. Then IPL scam that was very that was very notorious at that time. The BCCI has found itself in the middle of many conflicts with various cricket boards around the world as a result of the Indian IPL. The main point of contention was that the signed players should always be available to their country for international tours even if the overlaps with the IPR session. To address this issue, BCI officially requested the ICC to institute a time period in the international future tour program solely for the IPR session. So, this request was not granted at a subsequent meeting held by the ICC. Okay. And some people, some uh, players were also arrested and they were involved in the sport fixing. So, on 14th May 2012, a, the Indian news channel India TV aired a sting operation which accused five players involved in sport fixing. So, like these five players were like uh, the Rajiv Sukla, he also immediately suspended the five players. The five players were TP uh, Suhindra, uh, Mohinish Mishra, Amit Yadav, Shalab Srivastav and Abhinav Bali. So, these five players they were suspended, but then this inquiry moved in for other players also. Like for example, Mohanish Mishra who was part of Pune Warriors team for the season admitted to have the franchisee pay black money in a sting operation. Mishra was caught on tape saying that the franchisee paid them black money and that he had received 15 million. Okay, 15 million uh, 15 million is around like one and a half crore rupees from the uh, from the franchisee among with 12 million was black money he was also suspended from the team so you can see in this case because of only few players because of their unethical decisions illegal decisions also the entire IPL and entire cricket uh, game was suffered then uh, in the 2013, three players of Rajasthan Royals were arrested by the Delhi police on charge of sport fixing. These three players were Srishant, Ankit Chawan and Ajit Chandalia. All three players were suspended by BCCI. Okay? And uh, so you can see like more and more players were involved in this process. And finally, uh, because of this too much corruption in the cricket game, on 25th March 2014, Supreme Court of India told Anne Srinivasan to step down from his position on his own as a BCCI president in order to ensure a fair investigation else it would pass verdict asking him to step down. Okay. So then Supreme Court had to intervene and stop this unethical and illegal behavior. Harshad Mehta scheme, everybody knows about the Harshad Mehta scheme. The scheme was the biggest money market scheme ever committed in India amounting to approximately 5000 crore rupees by that time. If you see that amount value now, it will go maybe more than 1 lakh crore. The main uh, person behind this scheme uh, was the stock and money market broker Harshad Mehta. I think we have seen some movies and uh, some uh, web series also about this guy. It was a systematic stock fraud using bank receipts and stamp paper which caused the Indian stock market to crash. The scheme exposed the inherent loopholes of the Indian financial system and resulted in a completely reformed system of stock transactions including an introduction of online security system. Security frauds refers to the idea of a diversion of friends, uh, funds from the banking system to various stock holders or brokers. The 1992 scheme was a systematic fraud. Okay? So, he committed a fraud of over 1 million from the banking system to buy stocks in the Bombay Stock Exchange. 
this impacted the entire exchange system as the country system, country security system collapsed and investors lost hundreds of thousands of rupees in the exchange system so you can easily understand you can easily understand that just because of one guy and few unethical uh, employees of the banks thousands of people lost their money so i believe that you know by this uh, presentation now you will understand that it's not so easy to take an ethical decision but if you understand the legal provisions little bit like if you understand cbi enforcement directorate cb rbi you know that we will discuss later on so that if you find something wrong in your company if you believe that your company is doing something wrong if other company is doing something wrong and that wrong is going to affect the people at large then very silently you can write a complaint to all these enforcement agencies regulatory bodies and you can claim the confidentiality also so in this manner we can take ethical moral decisions for our personal and professional life in our company and we can be a responsible citizen also so i hope that this uh, ppt this session uh, will, uh, is helpful to you to understand the ethical dilemma when you face any pro ethical issue in your company or in your business or in your job and how to solve how to go for the right answer i believe that you will go for the ethical and moral direction rather than going for short term gains you will look for the long term gains uh, based on your ethical and professional standards thank you